Kia guys. <laughs> Soji. Kia yeah. guys, and for the first time in almost a year and a half, Talk To Me Nice, the Blues Podcast is back. Uh, brought to you by Buffett and Thompson. Uh, uh, today I am joined by two two men that need no introduction. We have the future and the past of... Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Damn! I'm, I'm present is the past. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we, have, we have two uh, amazing, amazing blues men here. Um, and we are excited to get into a bit of a chat today. Um, I'm joined by Joshua Fusitor and Angus Tatavau, the um, two men with the galottal stops in their last man. Mm. It's, uh, it's good mm. to have you here, boys. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Oh, don't talk to me at all. Konnichiwa. 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 Ah, hi. Mm. Okay. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, but big point here. We are in Japan. Um, boys have flown here for preseason in Japan. We are a few days in. We've got a game tomorrow against Suntory Sun Goliath. Are we excited? Are we ready to play this game? I, I just want to address the first the introduction, bro. Come on, man. One. <laughs> <laughs> Like, nah, I think it's pretty fair. Am I, have I retired, bro? <laughs> is this is this something I don't know about? How many caps are you on? 49? Damn, 49. Why'd you say damn like that, bro? Damn. But like, yeah, okay. That, that's, you'll accept that. We'll move on. Japan, plus. Um, <laughs> Excitation levels. Yo, I'm just, yo, I'm just happy as to be here. Um, nah, it's been a long, hard preseason, eh? I'm just keen to rip off the boys. So, yeah. yeah. First time thoughts? in Japan? Yeah, first time in Japan. Um, yeah, just, just loving it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Love experiencing I've, I've the never culture. Seen, it's like, you know the, the classic phrase, a kid in the candy store? Honestly, you just see this guy. I've seen him out, we're down, walk down Shinjuku. He just like, whoa, he's like that old school, like, you know, at the fair? Yeah, yeah well, the, the, the clowns? Yeah, yeah, he's like a clown, cool. just looking at it. Uh, um, but what's one of your guys' favourite sort of activity here in Tokyo so far? It's been early doors, eh? So we haven't had a yeah. full chance to to get out there. But I think, um, man, I just love how passionate the fan, like the fan, we rock up at the airport. There's like pictures, they give gifts. Uh, people remember me from the times that we've come before. And then, you know, we've, we're staying here in Shinjuku, just walking down and it just buzzes me out. Like we're in a pretty chill area where we are staying, but you walk down to 10 minutes down the road and it's just like, yeah, it's almost like a one of those games just that you put that, What's that movie? You put the glasses uh, on? Uh, uh, really one. Game, oh, nah, nah, it's that guy. What's the one with, um... Um... <laughs> nah, Ready Player One. Yeah, nah, there's Ready Player One. Though. Nah, but there's one where it's, he's the NPC, Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Oh, um... The other guy, or... Uh, free, free Guy? Free Guy. Free, free Guy, guy yeah, yeah. You know, you put, and it's just like all the lights, ting, 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 yeah. ting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just like so different to, to what New Zealand has at home. Um, but uh, I just, I love the energy. The energy, the inner. In terms of rugby force, so you, um, how, what, what do you expect from from Sangla tomorrow? Um, I haven't really, I don't really know much about them. I just know that um, Japanese brand of rugby is real quick. Um, they love chopping. They're real low to the ground, so they love getting over that ball real quick. So um, I'm expecting a real quick, quick game tomorrow. Eh? I'm just um, praying, praying for my lungs. Tomorrow, hopefully we get through. It'll be nice so, to lock up with someone new other than the same six dudes for the last, how long have you guys been locking up against each other? Pre-season? Oh man, it feels like it's been years, but flipping. That, this pre-season has been honestly been... <laughs> Introducing Mark Bennett to the Blues. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a grind. it's, it's a definitely grind. been one of the hardest I've, I've been a part of. I've only been a, I haven't been a part of many, but how about you? Yeah, it's up there. I've had worse, but um, pre-Christmas was like, you're just trying to find the light. <laughs> At the end of the tunnel, I don't know if it's because I couldn't breathe or like, <laughs> you know, it was some tough, some tough times in there. But yeah. nah, it's been good. Like, it's actually nice to be going to hit and scrum against someone else yeah. that's not your teammate. So it's all the work we put in to do it is now, and we get to do it in Japan, which is, I mean, what a what a privileged position to be in. Mm. In terms of like having a preseason abroad and bringing the whole team, like even the boys who aren't really going to play these two games are here. What does it sort of offer for the culture of the team, Gary Kid? I, I like for me. I know like we work really hard in, in pre-Christmas block, but obviously the whole squad wasn't here. The All Blacks uh, were, were on their rest, and the ability for us to come over here and uh, have those boys come into the environment, um, be able to connect off the field, on the field get them back into training. Like if it was just us who were playing coming over, they, was, they would have stayed home 
sort of missed that little, you know, connect, connecting and building up that morale in the yeah. team. Um, and then, you know, you can still work on, on the games. We've still got the Chiefs when we get back home. So uh, the ability to do that all in one building, our food provided, you know, yeah. water's provided, <laughs> every, everything's provided. So all we need to do is worry about connecting as a team and being better rugby players. So yeah. first, like, can you tell when the culture of the team is not quite there or... Is that how important is sort of off field and the culture of the team to, to success? Oh yeah, uh, I really believe that. Yeah, that off field connection is real important. Eh? Um, I think um, I think back a couple of years when I was a part of the Blues environment and we went down to Queenstown for like two to three weeks. Um, that was probably one of the best things that happened for our team, and um, we literally got forced to live together for three weeks. We got sick of it, but um, <laughs> no, nah, I think it was good for the team. Eh? Like honestly, we just. Um, saw the ugly and the good of each other and um, yeah I think it's just important those connections off the field and especially heaps of young boys in the in the squad this year and um, how old the, are you? Uh, 22. How old are you? I'm 33. Damn! Damn. <laughs> Damn. I'm the past. This is the future. Damn. Don't ever be saying young boys like you Damn. ain't a young boy. They're not just heaps of young boys. Like, wow. Man you're 22. This... <laughs> nah I was gonna say I was gonna say Queenstown, all the, you know, back in Queenstown, <laughs> when I was just coming. Nah, I was going to say, all the young boys that I've grown up, they're coming, <laughs> coming through the grades together. Oh, sorry, yeah. I cut you off. Yeah, but you, you sorry, chill, gee, chill, gee. chill, chill, chill. <laughs> you wrapped us up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's cool. They get, uh, we all get to come here together and, um, you know, ripping off some, some of the guys that we grew up watching. So, like this guy. Yeah, we ain't watching me anymore. <laughs> yeah, <come. laughs> gee, I was in high school, yeah. and this guy was... Yeah, you were working. nappies, bro, when I started playing. <laughs> Damn. I was mean, speaking about this relationship, like, how, how has it been? Sort of, yeah, two people at very, like, different stages of career, but, yeah. In a, in what the, stages the are we talking yeah. about? Like, <laughs> Past. <laughs> Future. In the most positive way. I mean, like, you obviously must be learning a lot from each other. Um, you know, how are you maybe playing a bit more of a mental role this time back at the Blues? Um, and for us, what are you learning from... Um, from Gus, I'll start with you, Gus. Man, I, I just think like even um, over the last couple of Auckland seasons, um, seeing Fuss as a young bloke, uh, how hard he's worked, um, and then <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm about to shed a tear because of how you're inspiring me as a young guy <laughs> in the team. No, nah, but um, st uh, straight up, just to see the growth that he's had, um, as it's. Prop is, is a different, you know, you see all these flashy young backs come in super fast and they, you know, straight away they're killing it, um, whereas Prop's a bit different, it goes the other way. But, man, the young guys like Fuss um, coming through, the feedback that he gets and then obviously we scrum against each other and with each other and be able to, to see those improvements of, of, you know, what he needs to work on. It's been awesome to see. Obviously, love, love to have a laugh and, you know, we always sort of mock each other and have banter and, and that's... Uh, a massive reason of, of why I still love playing this game. The young guys keeping me young, but <laughs> um, man, big future for this guy, and, and it's been a, a, a privilege to, to watch him grow. So, oh, son, thanks, man. Just come here, man. Well. Appreciate it, man. I mean, and of course, I think I, I don't think many other young props can say they've been blessed to be mentored by some of the people you've been mentored by. I mean, we've had like Offa, Nepo, and now Gus at Auckland, and, um, and yeah. now now here. Um, what have you taken from some of those guys? Is it? Yeah, I've bro, I've had the opportunity of being mentored by like so many international players. Um, even yeah, like you mentioned, Nepal, Offer, well, you know? Carl, Gus, Leeds. bro, the Lay brothers, both playing for Manu Samoa, Mas, he's playing for, he was in the um, Maori All Blacks. Um, yeah, for just now, nah, I've just been learning so much, and I think um, what's been great is that they've made it easy. Um, there's no like, I guess, um, like there's no barrier between the, the older guys or the experienced guys and the younger fellas. Like they just want to help us, and in turn, I guess it just helps the franchise move forward because we're all getting better as a team. And um, nah, yeah, I just really appreciate those mentors, eh? And they've helped me a lot. Um, and yeah, I think. Just be honest, bro. Huh? Just be honest. <laughs> what do you mean, G? <laughs> Say what you feel, bro. Yeah, I got dusted up by like Gus and Lepo, G, bro. Nah, fun, straight bro. up, man. Fucking preseason for Auckland and preseason for Blues, I'm just getting dusted up by those two, G. Nah, he's, 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 <laughs> he's nah, the brother, dusted up. Nah, he's he's uh, cleaning up the floor now. Damn. I was getting dusted up, but um, that's the best way to learn, I guess.
Yeah. Yeah, nice. And Gus, uh, welcome back to the franchise. Mm. Um, place you started, what, 10 years ago now, and now you're here, back again. A uh, very different stage in your life and career. Mm. What was the decision to move back? What was the what fueled that fueled that flame? And um, what, what what have you found to be the most positive oh, man, things from the move? It's been uh, I think it's been like almost uh, two thousand eleven was my first time. Uh, grateful wider squad back then. Um, different times now, which for the better. Um, but I've been a bit of a journeyman. I've probably been mocked by some of the boys. Being a bit of a a, a club. What would you? What would you? I know there's a word, but there's. Yeah. But you know, it's like a club jumper. Yeah, club jumper. Oh, yeah, you just jump around off the clubs. Yeah. yeah, I know, but people like you know, guys like a kid, and they're like, I'm at the one club. <laughs> you know, you're switching around. I'm like, hey, there's, there's players who've played for every Super Rugby franchise, <laughs> that's it, bro. and that's all about like, it's not about you know the end. It's about the journey. So yeah, I mean, the the opportunity popped up um, to come back home. Uh, to Auckland, uh, I've got a son, um, you know, with special needs, and then having our daughter um, just added a whole another layer. So uh, to be able to come back home around support, um, all our family's pretty much in Auckland, um, and and you know this is where I started. Obviously, we talk about career paths, and mine's over the hill. Uh, at 33 years old, or uh, definitely over the hill. Um, to be able to set back up, um, you know, in my hometown, I'm an Auckland boy. I went to school in, in Auckland, started at Auckland Rugby, debuted for the Blues, um, and to be home, it's, it's felt good. Um, you know, me and me and my wife have, have sat at our house and just felt content and happy um, with the decision. Um, I, I love to love to the Chiefs, love my time there. Um, now it's the next part of, of my my journey, as, as we like to say, and I've been enjoying it. Nice, and I think I think we can all say you know it's it's been really nice having you here. I think I think off off the field you provide so much to this team and that's it, it, awesome, and hopefully on the field as well. So yeah. we're, we're excited yeah. to see you, see you play first game. Hopefully, in, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, first game for you for the Blues in in a, in a, in a long time tomorrow. Mm. So excited to see you have that jersey on. Sure. Um, you were saying that uh, you went to school in Auckland. Uh, we, you know, we had two two schools that are very close to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, close than like distance, but not close than like <laughs> see, ability. There's, 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 there's a big gap there. <laughs> yeah, but when you're importing all your players, see, you're outnumbered on this country. Yeah, yeah it's two grandma boys here. Two soldiers. Mm. Um, did your Did your brother go to grandma as well? Nah, he went to a stink school called oh. Kelston. Oh, okay. Kelston boys, nice. yeah. Stink. <laughs> um, speaking of your brother. Yeah. yeah um, I don't know if many people do know, but your, your brother has been a, a has a stellar career in, in rugby league. Um, you know, uh, played for the Warriors, played for the Kiwis, played for played for Mata Matonga. What have you taken from him um, in terms of um, what, what, what have you learned from his career? Has has he taught you anything in, uh, specifically um, as you sort of grow into yours? Um, yeah, I, it's pretty cool having an older brother that's um, you know played professional footy and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, I wasn't blessed with the ge same genes as him. <laughs> How high can you jump? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not high. Uh, but I'm not fast, but he's like, we're, we're total opposites, eh? Honestly, he's the yeah, most athletic. <laughs> yeah, coming through high school, most athletic dude, um, freakish um, talent. And I was just like, I was like that short, like chubby little brother. <laughs> um, they just tag Drop. along. <laughs> Very straight up. But um, nah, it's been so cool um, just having him around and supporting me um, just through my footy career and um, just, you know, just having someone that's, you know, been in this environment and is able to, you know, give me advice on, you know, the pressures that come with, um, you know, playing professional footy and um, how to handle those things and how to navigate those, um, those things. And um, yeah, it's just, I'm just yeah, super blessed to have him around eh? and um, still keep in contact with him, even though he's over in the UK at the moment um, with his family playing um, footy there. But um, yeah, uh, probably like the most, um, probably the most important thing I've taken away from him just to um, just keep enjoying the game. Um, you know, there's times, you know, because he's Obviously, he's a bit older now. He's coming towards the end of his career, and um, he just keeps reminding me just to love the game, um, make sure you, that's the reason why you play, and um, yeah, so it's a constant reminder in my head. So yeah. Did Did you get to like? Did you go into the Warriors change rooms in there? Um, yep. 
Have, you got, have you got photos of like those, you know, those throwback photos where you're like the little ball boy or something? Or oh no, nah. you know, now you're here. You're the blues man. Sean Johnson and Nah, yeah. oh. no, not in the Warriors um, changing room. But um, I used to run um, like the T, and I used to be the ball boy for his um, rugby league club, Maris, Maris Saints. Oh yeah, yeah, and all the boys still remember me. The as yellow that. V, is it? <laughs> yeah, oh. bro, all the boys still remember me as that um, <laughs> that fat little. <laughs> bro, I'll be like sprinting onto the side. Bro, honest, I was doing Chacho! the most. <laughs> Chacho! Bro, I was doing the most. I was sprinting onto the sideline, <laughs> sprinting off the sideline to the middle. Put the T in the middle. Put the ball there. Sweet Yo. boys, but yeah. <laughs> that's that's good, bro. Um, and I, I feel like you've sort of become the poster boy for the Blues pathway. You started <laughs> off, well, you, you played what Blues 18s, 20s, and now you're in um, a full fledged member of the squad. What can you say about the Blues pathway um, going from school, first 15, coming through the system, um, and like, well, what's, what's that process been like? And, and now you're here. Well, if the opportunity is given to you, you've got to take it with two hands, eh? Um, I was never like even coming through um, year 11, year 12, I uh, wasn't really, you know, in the mix. And then um, year 13 came around and um, had a pretty good, all good season and got called into Blues 18s. Um, and then from there on, went into academy and whatnot and Blues 20s. And um, everything, oh, Everything was, oh, not everything was handed to me, but the, when the opportunity came, um, I definitely took it with both hands. And um, I think that's like the main thing that, uh, like for the young fellas coming through is that um, don't take it for granted. Because um, those opportunities, man, honestly, they, they work wonders there. Eh? And, um, you know, I'm so, so thankful for those little um, look-ins from coaches and from um, even the higher-ups in the Blues um, staff just um, giving me opportunity in that space. Because that's what, you know, that, that essentially was my stepping stone into um, where I'm at now, and um, yeah, it's kind of been the story of my uh, story of my journey so far. Just to get here, just every opportunity that was given, um, you know, I just flipping honestly didn't look back. Just took up both hands, so yeah. Because there's a bit of a stigma that in that in Auckland we we lose all our talent. There's <laughs> <laughs> a you know. Yeah. To, to say right there. Um, and you, you had a debut, your debut was against Moana, or was yeah. a, you know, what, what did you take from that game? It wasn't, you know, uh, probably what you hoped prob for, for your debut, it was probably but, the, we're not dreaming of it, but what did you take from that game? <laughs> probably the best one minute of my life. <laughs> hey, cap's a cap, baby. <laughs> cap's a cap. Um, yeah. you know, but, um, On the team sheet. <laughs> nah, I took it though, but um, nah, it was just, oh man, I was so nervous that week, eh? Um, it was our storm week and I um, didn't even know I was going to play. I was just getting ready to be in the opposing team for training and then all of a sudden see my name on the board. And um, now it's just cool as being a part of the whole setup, like the warm up. Um, even the warm up was crazy. Like I was like flipping, getting nervous as and um, being a part of the warm up, even just sitting on the bench, just watching the time tick down. And I was like, oh, flip, man, I'm just I'm just ready to rip in. But um, nah, just honestly. I remember every moment of the day, I was so happy. Um, and yeah, my family was super proud as well. So it's good, good to, to have them around as well. Nice. What do you remember of your debut, Gus? Uh, it was 2012. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and uh, it was down in, in Hamilton against the Chiefs. Um, I think I might have got like 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, and. I vividly, I was scrumming against um, Jason Tamalolo. Joe, Jason. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Tamalolo! <laughs> Sona, Shout out Sona, he was one of the tr leading try scorers damn. Flipping, pick and go special. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I like knocked the ball on uh, and we lost to the Chiefs. But um, I, I, I like sort of grew up, I said I was, I was an Auckland boy, but I lived in Raglan for eight years. Um, while I was boarding at, at Dilworth, so it was cool to, to debut um, against them. And then obviously the crazy journey of um, playing for the Chiefs, playing my 100th game, um, Super Rugby game for the Chiefs against the Blues. Um, so there's always been a, a cool little, I don't know, intertwination mm. of, <laughs> of, of my journey. But intertwination. Yeah, yeah, just a young, how old were you, were you David? 20, 20. Uh, 21. Yeah, not very yeah. nice. That's good. Um, yes. Gus, you had a pretty scary injury recently. Um, 
how has it sort of been first of all like sort of what what sort of happened what was the whole situation and what well, how's your journey sort of coming back to rugby especially when something that sort of scary happens um you know how, how's it been for you man uh like at the time because um, i was sort of getting a few stingers like leading up to that and i was just like oh you know that's just what happens you get, you get caught your neck and then went to make a tackle on on Bryn Gatlin going to score a try and then Thomas Aake was coming over to cover as well and it was just this perfect storm of him hitting my head and my spinal cord which I, I later found out was narrowed at at that point which meant can you hold the mic to me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. hold that mic yeah so in a normal is this the Go right down here. In a normal spinal passage, say like that's your spinal passage, you've got your cord and then fluid around it. And at one point, my spinal passage, the C3, so I'll open up C3, C4, was narrowed. So in that collision, bent back, it pinched. Thanks, thanks, nah, no thanks for that. Appreciate you, bro. He's always, he's always willing to help. <laughs> uh, in, in that um, pinching of, of the spinal cord, man, I had lost feeling neck down. So it just happened in a bang, happened in a blur, and then I was lying there. I think the ball was under me. And I was like looking down, I was like, man, whose arms, whose arms are those? And I was like, nah, like that's like that's my tats. And I it was just this craziest realization that I can't like I can't move. And I was like, no, no, please, 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 please. For what felt like forever, probably was just under a minute, finally started getting some sensation into my fingers. And I was like, come on, toes, toes, toes. Finally got sensation to my toes and I was like okay sweet but at that at that moment I was like no nah, I'm, I'm done like I'm I'm never playing rugby again I'm finished um plums my plumber our physio came over you know they were doing the whole roll over and keep your neck still and I was telling him I'm I'm done my family right yeah right there I was like I'm retiring I'm like scariest moment of my life I'm I never want this to happen again I don't even want to get close to it. my brother and uh, my family were at, were at the game they came up to me in the tunnel. I'm on a stretcher. The boys are still playing, yeah. like running past me, uh, you know, for half time and they're back out. And I'm just chilling on the stretcher, like pins and needles on my arms. And my brother was like, just chill. Like, you know, you don't know. I was like, nah, stuff this, bro. I'm never risking this again. Anyway, um, found out it was, that was the cause. Um, spoke to my surgeon. Um, he's, I think he's the goat of spinal surgeries in New Zealand and gave me the confidence that, uh, that was the reason that was causing it and having this surgery would pretty much make it safer than beforehand and knowing other players had had that surgery and were back playing sort of gave me the confidence and once I'd settled down to to get back on the footy field so um, ended up being nine months because I had a little heart atrial fibrillation speed bump along the way um, but like got back into it with Auckland and still feel like I'm um, like I think at this age, nine months is a long time of mm. not like, you know, upper body strength, neck, everything, all the little niggles start to come back. So um, just getting back into footy, having a good preseason has been, I think, exactly what I needed. Um, but yeah, like was, felt like I was, it's funny because I talk to people and they like, they see like, oh, you're at the Blues. I thought mm. you retired. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably because I was doing some TV stuff too. They're like, is this guy even playing anymore? <laughs> This trash has, you know. <laughs> um, so, oh, man, I'm just excited to be back home, excited to be representing the Blues and, and you know, hopefully get some more games under the belt. Yeah. yeah. How has sort of becoming a dad changed the way you look at rugby? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, um, nah, I just love it, eh? Just love Who's coming your daddy? <laughs> and what is he doing? Son, I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> man, like, for me, when, when we had Leo in Australia, like, that changed my priorities. Uh, massively like I'm a family first guy you know like it's a big reason why I came to to the blues and and obviously with with kids running through my mind was like when that injury happens like I don't want to be in a wheelchair and not be able to run around with my kids and you know in, in the future so that that definitely played a massive part of my mind but my kids are like that's the world to me you know I they're my why big reason why I'm still playing this game as well and um you know, even now, my, my little girl, she's freaking doing things that I'm, um, <laughs> you know, like she's doing these new cool things. I'm getting these videos, oh, like, you know, wanting to cry and that. Um, so, like, as much as I love, like, all this touring stuff, like, I can't wait to get home as well, you know. So it's like this this balance of family and, and 
and footy life. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we'll we'll start to wind down the podcast here. Let's keep going, man. (laughs) Let's keep going. What else? What else you got? No, Uh, I'm just going. going. Okay. Um, (laughs) Last, I find a little little fun question here. Um, Would you rather be? Would you rather have to defend yourself against a hundred horse size? Oh, one horse sized duck, or a hundred duck sized horses? Hundred duck sized horses. One one hundred. One horse sized duck. Bro, I reckon a hundred ducks on their own would be tough to kill. So <laughs> nah, no, but gee, have you a been... horse? Nah, but a horse-sized duck, they can fly. Bro, they'll, they, bro, they can pick you up and just fly away, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, straight nah, up, and they, they, they can't pick you, like pick you up, gee, because they they got webbed feet. They ain't got like talons. Nah, well, they just bite you like this and then, gee, then just you fly away. <laughs> 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 Oh, for what? Hundred horse-sized ducks kick. Yeah, hundred horse-sized. Yeah, I, hot I, I, oh, hot day duck. Hot day, hot day. Nah, I reckon a hundred horse-sized ducks. I'll take oh it. no, a hundred duck-sized <laughs> ducks. <laughs> but he's, this guy backs himself. That's what I tell you about this hundred, guy. A hundred duck-sized horses. Of course, the tongue yeah. cheek. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go. I'll go for. What are you gonna them, do? What are you gonna do? Far, drop kick. Oh, how many? Hundred. Yeah, hundred of them. They're dude. jumping on I you. I can get like four in one kick. Yeah, that's four. With ninety-six more, they come, they're coming from the back. Yeah, a hundred, like. Nah, hey, that's your choice. I'd go for a one duck-sized horse. Why? No, one. <laughs> gee, if you grab it like this, gee, it's taking you away, <laughs> gee. <laughs> nah, when you, nah, I'll go with that. I'll stick with that. Wow, that's yeah. great stuff, guys. Yeah. Um, and the last off, we just want to thank Buffett and Thompson for this, mm. for this podcast. Yeah, thanks, Buffett and Thompson. Thompson. Appreciate you guys, man. Appreciate Buffett and All Thompson. All the work you do. Yeah. Every day. Every time you come out and support us on our jersey, we appreciate you guys. All over the place, it's good. We like Martha and Thompson. Yeah. Um, and that's been the podcast, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, who do you reckon should be on the next episode? That's what I'm going to ask you guys. I reckon Josh Berry and Sam Derry. Oh, okay. like the two tall respect. timbers, but... You reckon? Do, do you reckon they have the connection there? They might be here. Yeah, their sparks might yeah. not be because Barry's like a, the young buck coming through. Yeah, true, true, true. Barry is. You think about like someone who's got Cole, Cole Forbes. You're talking about Cole Forbes and, and Cashy, Lucas mm, Cashmore. Like they Cash got money. that Bay thing. Yeah, that Bay connection. Or you can get three, maybe just Cashy, Curdy, and Cole. Oh, just the, yeah, the whole Bay. Because Curdy brings a little bit of flavor as well. Mm. I feel like the banter will be good there. A little threesome. Okay, um, and at that point beef, we were in the podcast. Um, thanks, boys. Thanks, bro. Hey, <laughs> thank you to you as well. Alfred and Thompson, Alfred and Thompson, Tane, Gus, Josh, Fuss, Josh. <laughs> Joshua, Kim Yao, Situa. We've got to make sure we get the name yeah. Yeah. 100% complete with the. Love you, mum. And the Wudda. Yeah. yeah. Love you, mum. Yeah. Love and you, mum. Oh, Tata Minai. Talk to me nice, talk to me nice, oh don't talk to me at all